can't go back and change your childhood and you can't go back and change things that have happened to you in the past. What you can do is just do your best in the moment and start implementing the tools and trusting the process and showing yourself a little bit of compassion and starting to learn how to love yourself and realize progress instead of perfection. Hey everyone, I have here Brennan and he's just coming off from the intensive uh, program and he's willing to share his story and journey since he started. And brother, can you give us a quick introduction and um, just basically who you are and how you found the program? Yeah, so uh, I'm 28 years old. I'll be 29 soon. Um, found JK on YouTube, I think like maybe six or seven years ago, back when I was like 21. Didn't really have the confidence or the money to maybe join the program. And I think I rationalized for the first year or so, like, maybe I don't need the program. I, you know, maybe I can do this on my own. And then after just kind of experiencing life for five or six more years and realizing the amount of pain that I was in, I knew that I needed to find help. And I think just with everything that I've researched and seen, it just felt like JK in this community was going to help me the most. And it's definitely been life changing. And so that's what ended. That's what enabled me to join the program. Nice. Okay. Thank you for sharing that brother. And, um, what was going on? What was your life like before you joined the program? What was your pain? What was going on? Yeah. So, um, I think obviously a lot of it goes back to childhood. I mean, the first time I came across, I think for a lot of guys is somewhere around like, you know, eight or nine, I think that was about the same for me. Um, and then, you know, moving high schools around 12 or 13, you know, I grew up a lot heavier than I am now and, you know, being bullied in school and moving cities and being a part of a, you know, minority religious group, I feel like, you know, the only coping strategies I had um, with, you know, distant parents at the time and them struggling economically was to turn to when I got an iPhone around, you know, 14 or 15 years old. Um, and that was really the only real coping strategy that I had at the time. Um, and then, uh, you know, going into my early 20s, um, I think because I am ambitious, a lot of addicts are ambitious. Yeah. Um, I think that we, you know, because of our insecurity, we have, you know, in our ego, we're, we're chasing something that's greater. And for me, it was money. And so I did door to door sales for a really long time. And I realized that I was so focused on making money and just trying to prove how you know, great I was, I was neglecting all the things that really mattered in my life, like family relationships, my mental health, um, my body. And so once I got to a point where I was making great money, and I could afford to join the program, and I realized how broken every other area of my life was, um, I knew it was time to join the program because I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't who I knew I wanted to be. And I knew I needed a change. And I was sick of not doing the things I've always wanted to do, like jujitsu, lifting weights consistently, uh, you know, trying to date, going to church, doing the things that I, I know I should be doing, but just didn't have the belief that I could do. Mm. And so I knew that, you know, once I got to my mid twenties and I was still <laughs> rationalizing and still struggling with something that I thought I would be, you know, done with after high school, um, I realized that I needed help. And so that's when I reached out and invested in the program and it's been the, you know, the best decision I've changed careers. Um, I've worked through a lot of shame. Um, I went back to college, left the door to door industry, you know, found construction. So it's really helped me define my values and, and reinstill a belief in myself that I can have control over my life and I can start living the life that I've always wanted to live, but just haven't been able to because of. Mm. that's really good man thank you first of all thank you for sharing all that and that's be what's beautiful right you you get to like discover like whoa what really makes me happy or why am i hiding from why am i making myself small and like you said you were an ambitious guy already making money but still didn't feel fulfilled and that void was still there and what 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 tools that helped you get to that point what was working for you when you first started implementing i think just the morning routine was probably the biggest thing at first just trying to stick to a consistent schedule. I think the first thing that resonated with me were, was two things, the rubber band to, you know, help 
yourself not fantasize and catching yourself fantasizing, snapping yourself out of it. And then the second was the feelings exercise. I think I'm light years ahead now as compared to where I was a year and a half ago with identifying my feelings. I still have some ways to go as far as sitting with my feelings and processing them. Um, I'm still working through some of that pain, but I mean, with addiction, we just, you know, and we just neglect those so much throughout our entire life. And so, you know, being able to identify loneliness and frustration and different feelings and sadness and being able to accept them and to accept your past and to realize that your future's you know, can be greater than your past and sitting with those emotions has been life changing. So yeah, I would say the feelings exercise, um, was probably the first tool that I feel like really benefited me and then focusing on wins and getting ready to the, uh, the idea that counting days matters. Counting days is not how you track your progress. It's in, you know, who, who you are becoming and in the wins and in your daily habits, because you don't go from being addicted to as a addict and for 15 years all the way, you know, through your <laughs> mid teens and into your twenties to yeah. all of a sudden having complete control, but you can still realize that you're progressing and show yourself a little bit of compassion that, you know, with this community and with the tools that you're given, you can and will gain freedom as long as you stick with it and, and continue to believe in the process and continue to take daily action. No, I love that. And yeah, like, I think I could relate to that. Like the feelings exercise was like, you're, you're like, what the hell? I could, I didn't know that was a thing, right? I was like, break your feelings down. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, what the heck? And then you start <laughs> to kind of just bring more awareness and attention to like, oh, you know what? This is what's actually driving me to, in, in a very nuanced way to kind of just break my boundaries and not even just watch, just break boundaries. Like, oh, because it's uncomfortable. So I could relate with you there, man. That That's something. Well, I think. Uh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Go ahead. well, I was saying, I think it has a lot to do with your awareness too. like just having a morning, you know, you wake up, you make your bed, you use the restroom, you drink your pre-workout or whatever it is. Maybe you're religious and you read the scriptures or you pray. At least that's what I do. And then being able to sit there and just write your feelings out. It just helps you kind of set an intention like what JK says. And then you also have that check in where you're like, dang, I am feeling so tired today or dang, I'm feeling pissed off today for, I don't know why, but I'm feeling pissed. And yeah. then yeah, at least you have that on your radar. So you're not just aimlessly going through the day, not aware of the fact that you're maybe more irritable one day as compared to another, or maybe you're more depressed too. I know in the beginning for me, I was just looking at my feelings exercises over the last few months. And for me in the first few months, I mean, my feeling exercises are so different now, a year and a half almost two years later as compared to my first few months where I was just waking up, just feeling depressed every day and sad all the time. Yeah. And now it's like, I wake up and I'm like, Hey, I actually like, I feel grateful for today. Like, Hey, I might've slipped a week ago, but Hey, I'm making progress, whatever it is. I'm, I'm happy. I'm, you know, I'm doing these things. I'm more clear. And so that negativity has gone down so much, especially through that feelings exercise. So that's good. So yeah, that's, so you went from like reactivist to pro being proactive instead, right? It's like, I'm not reacting to these depressive episodes and really it's just little spirits, right? Like why are we in little spirits? It's because I didn't have structure, right? I didn't have a, a routine that actually set me up for success rather than just aimlessly, like you said, going through the day, like, like a zombie and autopilot. And that's yep. what's, that, that's what's scary when you look back, like, damn, I was acting that way. Like, it, it makes you not want your the work you just put in it makes you not want to go back to that state but but that's a work in progress which is good man thank you for sharing that and what are your non-negotiables now since you uh i know you mentioned feelings exercise and routine is there something else that's like a non-negotiable for you that you still implement to this day um yeah exercise stretching that's a non-negotiable the feelings exercise in particular is absolutely a non-negotiable um mm. I would say those two are the two biggest ones um, right now for me, I think. Nice. I know if I get my feelings exercise in, I also, I've really been liking the affirmations. Sometimes I feel like, oh, I am worthy, you know, writing down, I am worthy of love. I can yeah. talk to beautiful women, you know, whatever your af affirmations that you write out are, um, really affecting the self-image in that way. Um, so yeah, I would say the morning routine as far as JK's 10 commandments, the morning routine, I feel like is the biggest non-negotiable. 
And I've been really trying to implement if I do miss a day, not missing twice. Like if I miss a morning routine for whatever reason, one day because I'm feeling a lot of resistance or, you know, for whatever reason I didn't do it, not to miss a second day. Right. You know, just realizing that you, you're not going to miss twice. Even if you miss a non-negotiable, you're not going to miss twice. Yeah, it's so. like yeah, you like you don't brush your teeth one day, you don't just stop completely. Right? You just do it exactly. The next day. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like exactly. that. Exactly, that's good, man. So you just bounce back right away, and that's good because yeah, life is not perfect, right? Life still happens, you know. Just because you decide to start rebooting, you know, life doesn't stop for you, right? It's not gonna not throw you. Yeah. Shit. So the fact that yeah. you're able to handle it, that's really good. And um, yeah, so you mentioned your, you know, little. You say you're you you practice a a, a spiritual. Uh, yeah. routine or religion so from that how was it how did you manage the reboot with that how did you implement it with your spiritual practice did you come to terms why man this is more of a brain thing did you work through some shame or guilt there what was your experience like yeah i think um so i grew up lds mormon uh -huh. um and uh, yeah i think i felt a lot of shame um for probably you know the first year of even being a part of the program i think i was just so unaware of the shame that I was feeling. And, um, I think I pushed it down for a very long time feeling that, you know, something's wrong with me, you know, I'll never be able to overcome this, whatever my limiting beliefs are attached to that shame. Cause every time you act out, you know, you, <laughs> your sub addict personality tries to reinforce the fact that you can't overcome when in reality you can. And yeah. so, yeah, the shame, the shame and the guilt there. I mean, for me, I, I enjoy waking up in the morning and praying, um, and reading my scriptures and, you know, being thankful for the day. And so just realizing that each day is a new day and that you can always try again. Um, you know, even if you slip or if you avoid the all or nothing thinking where it's like, oh, I looked at this morning, you know, so I'm just going to, you know, off the rest of the day. It's like, no, you don't, you don't, you can take a stand there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can address that there and shake that shame off and be like, it's okay. And I think the beautiful side of, of, of the pain, once you learn to kind of get rid of that shame and accept it, you really become more compassionate and you're able to, you know, be more humble and share that empathy with others. And I think that's what makes you through this process, a better human being is the amount of times that you failed and you've never given up and then even when you felt like you could give up and even when you believe that maybe you you know maybe you had a, a limiting belief that you'll never overcome it that you can say well what if i can you know or maybe i will one day even just changing from maybe i will to i can't is a huge step and i think that shame of just not being able to look yourself in the mirror i didn't even realize that i wasn't looking at myself in the mirror for a long period of time and then realizing, wow, I haven't looked myself in the mirror and I'm feeling all the shame. I feel, you know, unworthy. I feel not worthy of love. I, I deserve these bad things happening to me in, in my life. And that's just not true. Wow. Um, it's uh... developing, it's developing the coping strategies and the belief. And I think a lot of that had to do with my belief uh, in Jesus Christ, but also just being a part of the community and having the community too, they help instill that belief in you that no many, how many times, no matter how many times that you slip and relapse, you can come back to the group and just share how you were feeling and no one's going to judge you for it. No one's going to shame you for it because they've been there. Yeah. And you have to realize that you're not in control. <laughs> you're not in control of your life. You can't expect to have control. So you're not going to shame yourself for that. And you can't go back and change your childhood and you can't go back and change things that have happened to you in the past. What you can do is just do your best in the moment and start implementing the tools and trusting the process and showing yourself a little bit of compassion and starting to learn how to love yourself and realize progress instead of perfection. That's good. So, man. I love that what you shared because you're right. We have, cause I came from a similar background like Christian and, um, and I was like so hard on myself. I was condemning myself <laughs> twice basically even though they you know, you know, the, if you want to say the price has been paid already, but it's like, no, I feel like I deserve more pain, more shame, more guilt, because it's not enough. Right. I was like judging, I was a judge and, and yeah. I was taking that role and that kind of, you know, it screwed me up a little because I attached so much shame and guilt unnecessary. Right. Which I could have just, you know what? I already paid the price for it. 
by you know acting out missing out opportunities what what may have you right but now i could like have grace like you said just have grace and be like, you know what i could you po- like you said post in the group have some support and actually have one listen to me without judging and having that safe space for me to share is is, is a game changer because it's like it eliminates that like oh man what are people gonna think of me right we're all there for the yeah. same thing so it's like oh okay that's that's a nice feeling so that's all for you to that you overcame that because that's i think that's one of the hardest things to kind of just see and being able to look at yourself like man oh, oh man i'm carrying so much disgust and shame and uh it's a heavy it, weight man shame yeah. and, it, and it causes you to act out when you're not aware of the shame that shame and it's easy to spiral and just just feel like you deserve it and yeah. that's just not the case and so learning how to deal with that shame and to avoid it all or nothing thinking and, and being able to to look at stuff as data and realize hey it's going to be it's little actions that got you to this point and it's going to be little actions consistently that get you out of it and you are a normal (laughs) you're not normal but you're a human being (laughs) right and we're it's okay to have a human experience exactly yeah like what you said we're having a human experience that's uh that's just part of the game right we're here and uh, thank you for sharing that, Brennan. And um, anything else, brother, that kind of brought you to like more wins into your reboot? Like, um, how is um, looking back a year ago, or you say a year and a half to now, what else has been significant change for you? Um, just like priorities and like values. Like really uh, being a part of the program has helped me really commit to what I feel like my values have, have always been. But basically reinstalling them, uh, helping me reinstall them in my life. Um, that's a huge thing. Um, and being able to maintain that. I mean, I never really been somebody that had ever done drugs before, but I was gotten to a point with within the door to door space where I was feeling so much shame and I had access, you know, with other I never grew up drinking or smoking weed, but I had access to that. And for me, weed ended up becoming something that I would use to medicate the negative consequences of my addiction. So I got to a point where I was using to deal with all my emotions. And then I was using abusing to help cancel out whatever, you know, a negative emotions I was feeling because I didn't want to believe that I was a addict and that I was struggling with induced erectile dysfunction or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. And so looking back on that now, being able to break free from and instill their proper boundaries and focus on things that actually matter, like being back in school and going to church and being a part of the community and being a part um, of basically just putting myself on a trajectory with my values where I'm actually living in line with my values to the best of my ability. And yes, I still make mistakes at times, but I know that if I continue and continue in this, that I'll be at a place where it's just, it'll be something long gone in the past. And that's what gives me the confidence and peace and faith in the future is because of those reinstilled values and boundaries where I actually have the tools that I need to continue forward on the right path and actually construct my life in the way that I want it to go by, by finding the right major that I want to study in school, by figuring out what I want to do as far as my career, you know, developing a love for learning. And I actually love the schedule. now I go to bed at like nine thirty, nine o'clock every night and I get up at like five, five thirty. So like just being engaged in that just brings me so much more joy. So yeah, I would say that's a long winded answer, but that that's good. <laughs> having those values reinstilled in me has meant a lot to me, especially being religious. Yeah. No, that's good, man. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's like you said, right. It's what's important to you and it's bringing value to your life because we're all different, right? We're not like robots here. So I'm glad that you found something that that actually I want to look forward to and just keep improving. Cause yeah, you're, you're relatively young, man. You got so much to kind of live for. Right. And the fact that you did this in a, in kind of early, you're just gonna keep going, man. Improving and just um, whatever that is, right? Whatever life takes you, and just uh, going with it. And and I want to ask you this question, brother. Anyone that perhaps someone's watching this and relate to you, like, hey, man, I have the, I struggle with this behavior, and I'm also religious, or and uh, I also didn't 
I feel depressed. I'm I'm a I'm a I'm a good salesman, but I just don't feel fulfilled as well. What would you tell that brother thinking about like, you know what, I kinda wanna join the intensive or any of the reboot programs? What would you tell that brother? Um, I would say absolutely join it. I don't care if you have to go into debt to do it. Just freaking join the program <laughs> and realize that it's okay that you are where you are. There's so many people that love and care about you and that want to help you. And you need to learn to love yourself enough to join the program and to drop all of your timelines. Don't think that, you know, you, if you can join this program and conquer it in 90 days, like awesome. Like you're freaking awesome. Like I <laughs> want you to do that. But if not, like, don't beat yourself up, like join the program, learn the tools and realize that you are struggling with you are struggling with and it's not going to change unless you take action and you actually try to do something about it and to give it your all and that process is going to be a beautiful process and it's going to change your life in ways that you didn't know it would and it's going to affect you for the rest of your life so wherever you are in the stage of your life and you're hearing this i would definitely say join the program learn to overcome the shame, invest, go in, go into debt if you have to, to join the program, it'll be worth it. And you may not see the benefits right away. It's going to be very difficult right away in the beginning, but it's going to be worth it. And anything that's difficult is always worth it. And, uh, that's, a, that's what I would say, man, is that your love, we love you. The guys in the group love you. God loves you. You're not a bad person. There's maybe some actions that we could have taken you know, earlier in our lives, that could have been better decisions, but we are where we are now. And the only thing you can do is you can't change the past, but you can change the future. And the best thing you can do is to take action and to, to join the program and to take the necessary steps each day to start to change. You have to start. So that's what I would tell thank anyone you that, that was listening. Yeah. Thank you. That no, sad. I don't even add to that. That was really good. And yeah, brother, that's just that first step. You're right. It is the hardest one. And <laughs> it's the hardest one, man. <laughs> but all right, Brennan, thank you for taking the time and sharing your um your story, your your journey, pretty much your hero's journey during your reboot time. And uh brothers listening, thank you for joining in. And uh Brennan, once again, thank you for joining us.